In this video, I want to show you how we're going to be doing exercise number one. We're going to build off the exercise we did here with the seagull shape. Let me show you the exercise that we're going to be doing. I have in this file a very familiar logo. However, it's a very low resolution image. If I come over to my magnifying glass and zoom in to the edge, you can see that we have a lot of pixelization. I'm going to hit Command-0 to put that back into the center of my screen. What I want you to do is use the pen tool to create a nice, clean vector version of this logo. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to turn off that image and bring up this. I'm going to reveal the vector artwork and zoom in. As you can see, the vector artwork has nice, clean, sharp edges. This is why we work with vector programs like Illustrator, so that we can create nice, clean edged artwork. So let's begin this process. What I'd like you to do is come to the File drop-down menu and select New. We are going to continue working with 8.5 by 11 inch document, but I'm going to change the orientation this time to Landscape or Horizontal. I'm going to say Create. The first thing I need to do is place the low resolution JPEG of the logo. I'll put a link to that file in the description below. Once you've downloaded that file and put it onto your hard drive, we can place it into this file by coming to the File drop-down menu and selecting Place. I've put my file into a folder called Tutorial Assets. You may want to do the same. Here is the logo that I want to place into my document. I've selected it and I'm going to select Place down here in the right corner. I now have an image placement tool. And the way I place this into my document is just by clicking and dragging across my document like so. I can use my black arrow to position that into the center of my document. Now what we need to do with this file is create a guide layer. A guide layer that I can then use as I create my clean vector artwork with my pen tool. As it is right now, this image is not going to work for us. There's a couple things that we need to do. This process of creating a guide layer is something that we're going to do quite often in this course, so this is something that we'll want to remember how to do. The first thing I do with this image file selected is come over to my transparency panel. I'm going to change this option right here where it says normal. Normal refers to its blending mode. We'll talk about blending modes a little bit more later on in this course. All I want you to do right now is change normal to multiply. Now what we've done is change the transparency of this file. It was normal, and you can think of normal as being like a piece of paper on a desk. You can't see through it. But by changing this to multiply, I've essentially changed that piece of paper to a piece of acetate, meaning I can see artwork behind it if there was something. You'll see how this works in just a moment. I'm going to make one other change here in the transparency panel. I'm going to come here to opacity and change that to 50%. That's all I need to do with this particular image file. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to the layers panel. Now we are going to get into the layers panel in much more detail in our next exercise. All we need to know right now is that we have one single layer with this image on it. Like I say, this is going to be our guide layer, and I don't want to accidentally create my artwork on my guide layer, so I'm going to lock this layer by clicking into this little section right beside the eyeball, and you can see a little lock appears. This guide layer is now locked, and I can't accidentally work on it. Let's do one last thing here for layer one. I'm going to double click where it says layer one, and I'm going to change that to guide layer. Okay, now we need a layer to create artwork on. Let's come down to the bottom of our layers panel, and you'll see this little icon here. This is our create new layer icon. I'm going to click that once, and you can see we have a new layer created in our layers panel. And this will be our artwork layer. And let's change the name of layer two by double-clicking it and calling that artwork. Press return on my keyboard. Now I want you to imagine for a second if we start creating our artwork on this artwork layer, we will quickly start to obscure the guide layer below, meaning that we won't be able to see our guide layer. But I want to be able to see my guide layer at all times. That's why we're going to do this last step here. I'm going to take my artwork layer and I'm going to drag it below my guide layer. You see that little blue line that shows up underneath the guide layer. That tells me that the artwork layer is now going to be repositioned. I'm now ready to begin the process of creating my logo artwork. As I mentioned, we are going to be using our pen tool for this process. But before I do that, I want to highlight one more thing. I'm going to come over here to my toolbox, and I'm going to choose my ellipse tool. And I'm going to create a perfect circle right here above my logo. I'm going to hold down my shift button and drag out a perfect circle. I'm going to make sure that it has 
a black stroke around it so that I can see it fairly easily. And I'm going to zoom in like so with my zoom tool. Now I'm going to come over to my toolbox and choose my white arrow. Now you'll notice that this circle has anchor points. If I click on them, you can see that it has four anchor points. And I can click on them individually. What I wanted to show you though is just how many anchor points do you need to create a curve? And when I say a curve, well, it might be a little more helpful for me to show it this way. I'm going to use my white direct selection arrow and I'm going to choose this bottom anchor point here and I'm going to press the delete key on my keyboard. So all of this was just to get to this point here and what I wanted to show you was just how many anchor points do you need to create a perfect curve. I consider this a perfect curve in, in the sense that it starts on one side, moves away to an apex, and then rounds around till it comes back moving in the opposite direction that it started. That is a perfect curve. And you can see that it actually takes one, two, three anchor points to make a perfect curve like this. No more and no less. Let me open up my pen tools here for a second. I'm going to choose my add anchor point tool to add an extra anchor point into my curve. I mentioned in the last video what happens when we have too many anchor points. Remember I was talking about pimples and dimples. That's the problem with these extra anchor points. It makes wonky curves more likely to happen. I'm just going to go command Z until I get back to my original starting situation. What happens if I don't have enough anchor points? I'm going to subtract this one here. And you can see what happens. It becomes a little bit more difficult for us to create this curve. I could still do it. It's just easier when there's three anchor points for a curve. I'm going to delete this semicircle. I'm going to press the delete key. And I'm going to press command zero to place my artboard in the middle of my screen. Let's take a look at this logo. You'll notice there are perfect curves all over the place. For example, if I was to start at the top of the letter C on the left and move around the back contour of that letter form, you'll see that in fact it is a perfect curve. It starts up here, moves in one direction, reaches its apex right around here, and then starts back in the opposite direction. That curve could be expressed with one, two, three anchor points. If I imagine proceeding on with this letter form on the outside here, starting at the bottom of my C, I could express this curve here, which is a slight S curve. If you'll notice, it starts curving in one direction and curving back in that direction. Well, an S curve can also be expressed with three anchor points, one at the bottom here, one at this transition point, and one at the end right there. And as we go through these letter forms, you'll see that it is nothing more than a series of three point curves. Even as we move around the finial of this letter form, we could express that with one, two, three anchor points. Let me show you how this is going to work. I'm going to zoom in to the top of my letter form. One tool I haven't mentioned yet that will come in handy right next to the zoom tool in the toolbox. This hand tool, when I select it, allows me to move my document in my window. This can be very useful for an exercise like this because we don't want to have to keep on zooming in and out as we move across our picture like this. I'm going to position my C in the center of my window and I'm going to select my pen tool. Before I start doing any artwork however I want to make sure that I have the right colors associated with this object because all I'm going to be doing is the contours of these letter forms I'm going to change the fill color by clicking on the fill color indicator and clicking on the none swatch I'm now going to begin this process by clicking at the top of the letter C and putting an anchor point right there like so you can see I have a straight line anchor because the straight line that comes out of that I'm going to position the next anchor point roughly here on the back of the C. And remember how we create curves, we need to click and then drag to drag out the handles that create the curve. And I'm going to drag out a contour that roughly follows the back of the C. Now you can see this is a smooth anchor point, and I can tell it's a smooth anchor point because it's creating this smooth curve that's coming out of that. But as you can see, that doesn't really follow the contour of that I'm looking for. So I'm going to convert that from a smooth anchor point 
back to a straight line anchor point and I'm going to finish this curve by clicking here where the curve begins to round back moving in the opposite direction that it started and I'm just going to put it roughly here and I'm going to click and drag as I drag out another handle for that curve. You can see here one anchor point, two anchor points, three anchor points. That's all that was necessary to create that curve. I'm going to continue on with this. I mentioned earlier I'm going to do this S curve here underneath the C with just three as well. Here's the first one right there. I'm, I've just clicked it to convert it to a straight line anchor point. I'm going to position the next anchor point roughly at this point where the S curve begins to curve in the opposite direction. I'm going to just click and drag like that. You see I don't have to drag very far for this curve. It's a very subtle curve. I'm going to click on that last anchor point to convert it to a straight line anchor point. This time I'm going to finish this curve by clicking on the corner here and dragging down and to the right to create that curve. Again I'm going to click on this anchor point to convert it from a smooth anchor point to a straight line anchor point. Now this curve here you can see is actually a fairly shallow curve. We can do this one with just two anchor points. Watch this. I'm going to position my next anchor point right here on the corner and I'm going to click and drag down and to the right. Because it's a shallow curve I can match that curve with just the two anchor points. Again I'm going to convert this anchor point from smooth to straight and I'm going to continue on with this curve. As you can see this curve is also a shallow S curve. Again I'm going to position my next anchor point right here where that transition between the convex and the concave come together. Position that right about there. Drag out a handle so it follows that contour. Click on that last anchor point so it becomes a straight line anchor finish this curve by dragging this down like so. This inside curve can be done with just three anchor points as well. Again I've got one down at the bottom here. I'm going to click to convert it. I'm going to position the next anchor point roughly here so it follows the contour. I'm going to click to convert it. I'm going to finish that curve by clicking at here. So again one, two, three anchor points to create that curve. To continue on here to here, I'm going to con again click on that to convert it. I'm going to create this curve again with just two anchor points. It's a shallow curve. We can do that. But this finial, the end point of our letter form here, is going to again be done using one, two, three to create this curve. Again, click to convert. Click to convert. Again, I'm going to finish this with one two, three anchor points. So I'm going to again click to convert. I'm going to position my next anchor point roughly there. Click to convert and I'm going to finish this letter form by clicking on the original anchor point and clicking and dragging to the left like so. Now this looks pretty good. It's still not perfect. Watch this. I'm going to zoom in by using my zoom tool and I'm going to zoom into the top of my letter form like this. And you can see that I'm close, but I'm not exactly perfect. But remember from the last video, we can make changes to the path by using our white direct selection arrow. I'm going to choose my direct selection tool. Now that I've zoomed in, I can start to see just where my path needs work. And remember, I can use my hand tool to move myself across here like that. And I can see that this first curve that I made here doesn't quite follow the contour of the letter form. I'm going to use my white arrow to select this anchor point here. Oh, and I think I've zoomed in a little bit much, so I'm going to zoom back out and press command minus to zoom out just a little bit. This is going to require a little bit of work by moving both the handle by clicking on the handle and dragging it up like that so this curve follows more closely. But you can see here that this curve is a little bit too shallow over here where it's not following the contour of the original letter form. That's going to require that I not only move the handle, I might actually have to move the anchor point as well, just a little bit. I'm going to move it up just a little bit like that. And now I'm going to come back and move that handle back like this. And now I can see that this curve is following that contour a little bit more closely. 
when I moved this anchor point, it did change the nature of this curve and how it's following the contour of the letter form. So again, I need to make another change and press my hand tool. By the way, the keyboard shortcut for the hand tool is the space bar that allows me to move this into my screen so I can see this a little bit better. Again, I'm going to come back to my white arrow and you can see that this handle is controlling this curve. I'm going to click and drag on that handle and drag it to the left a little bit just so you can see how that curve now begins to follow that contour. I'm going to come down to the bottom of this line segment here and I'm just going to take this anchor point move it down just a little bit so it follows that contour and you can see here as I move through the anchor points one by one I can adjust their position and the position of the handles until that contour line follows the letter form as closely as I can get it. Your exercise is to continue on with outlining this logo. Starting on the left here and moving your way to the right, I want you to outline this entire logo, including the interior shapes of the O's and the A's, as well as the curly Q's. I'm going to do this next part and I'll put it on fast motion. You can pause this video and continue on. What I usually find is that students struggle with the first part of the word as they move through they get a little bit more practiced until by the end of the final A they're doing really well. Good luck! Okay, so I've finished pen tooling, but I'm not really finished with this yet. Let's take a closer look. To get a better look at what you've done, come over to your Layers panel and turn off the visibility of your Guide layer by poking it in the eye. I'm going to close my Layers panel so I can get a better look at this. This doesn't look too bad, but I do see a couple of small areas where this could be better. Now, you might say, that seems to be rather nitpicky. Well, welcome to the world of graphic design. And yes, this is the sort of thing that young graphic designers do all the time. When I first started as a graphic designer, one of the things I did most was cleaning up old logos so that they could be digitized. And that still happens today. And a logo is something that you do not want to mess with. Remember, though, from the previous video, how we make changes to something that we've already created. For example, this shape in between the two letter forms is a little bit wonky. I'm going to use my zoom tool to zoom in to that shape. And sure enough, yes, it could really use some work. There's all sorts of areas along my logo here that could use some work. But remember how we do this. I'm going to come over here to my direct selection tool and I'm going to click on this one first of all and I can see that I have a real problem with where that's placed. I'm just going to move that like so. When I click on that anchor point this handle that controls that line segments curve is revealed. I'm just going to drag that out a little bit like so just to make it a little bit more symmetrical with the other shapes that are occurring. In fact I'm just going to come along here and fix all of these shapes just to make them look a little bit more like the rounded rectangle 
rectangle that they're supposed to be. I'm going to use my hand tool by pressing the space bar on my keyboard to move over my logo like so. And I can see all sorts of pimples and dimples. For example, the finial of this letter form here has a number of unfortunate curves. When it comes to logos, this level of detail is to be expected. I'm just going to come back to my layers panel to reveal my guide layer, and I'm just going to fix this curve like so. It may be easier for me to see this against my background if I change the width of my stroke. We haven't talked about strokes yet. In the stroke panel here you can see that we have a property here called weight. The stroke weight refers to the thickness of that line. Currently it's set to one point. A point is a very small unit of measure. 72 points make up an inch, so you can see it's fairly thin, but we could make this even thinner. If I come to this drop-down triangle here, I can see that I can access the preset values. I'm going to make this really thin. I'm going to make it 0.25 of a point. Ah, now you can see just where I need to be in order to better approximate the logo underneath. I'm going to let you refine your logo to the level that you want to refine it. But once you are done, we are going to color it. I'm going to go Command-0 on my keyboard to place this logo in the center of my screen. Currently, I have a number of shapes that all have a black outline around them. I'm going to select all of these shapes by doing something called a marquee selection. I'm going, with the black arrow selection tool, I'm going to click and drag over top of all the shapes that I want to select. Now, all of, the, all of them are selected. I'm going to come over to my color panel and I'm going to bring my fill indicator forward and I'm going to make that red by clicking down here in the color spectrum. Now you can see we almost have the logo we're looking for but we have a problem. The counters or the holes in the letter forms need to be removed. Let's do that step next. There is a tool in our toolbox that we are going to become very familiar with as we proceed through this course. It's called the Shape Builder tool and it looks like this two overlapping circles with the arrow. I'm going to select that tool. The Shape Builder tool's cursor looks like that. The plus sign gives you a clue as to its normal default behavior. Let me show you what I mean. If I click in that center of that A and then drag over top of the rest of the A, it will turn that into one shape. But of course that's not what we want. I'm going to press Command Z. I'm going to press the Option button on my keyboard. And you'll see that the plus sign now turns into a minus sign. That gives me a clue as to what's going to happen. When I click on the center part of the A, it now cuts that section out. I'm going to do the same with the other counters for the other letter forms, as well as this curly Q here. There's just one more thing that I need to do. I'm going to get rid of the black outline by bringing the outline indicator forward and press None. I'm going to come to the Layers panel and turn off the Guide layer so that I can see the logo by itself. And there we go. We've completed Exercise 1. What I'd like you to do is save this file in an Exercises folder with your name on it and Exercise 1. And press Save. I'll let you know how we're going to submit this exercise later. That's all for Exercise 1.